It's kind of amazing sitting here and realizing that it's been a full month since the release of Black Myth Who Kong, and a couple of weeks since the release of Astrobot. And these were games that were hyped up as being major, major releases. They were uh, very popular on Twitter, especially Astrobot. Uh, YouTubers wouldn't shut up about them for a couple of days after release. And what happens? Almost immediately, they become completely forgotten. And the community immediately moves on to the next thing. Exactly like I said was going to happen, by the way. Black Myth Wukong had no momentum behind it. Astrobot was never going to be uh, compete on the same level with Mario. But you saw a lot of delusional people trying to pretend otherwise, right? This was the frustrating thing about these releases, was, was that they had no momentum behind them. Nobody liked them. Nobody cared about them at all, right? They were clearly inferior to other better games, particularly on Nintendo consoles, and yet we're supposed to, like, get excited about them. We're supposed to care that Black Myth Wukong is a thing that exists, right? When really it was nothing special, it didn't look good, uh, there was nothing about it that was interesting to me, and when you look at, like, the hype cycle for this, right, when you look at what game journals and, like, the YouTubers were saying, right, like, it feels like that game was only hyped up to, like, spike game journalists because, you know, it was seen as not being woke, you know. Astrobot was only hyped up because it was a PlayStation ex exclusive, right? These games are hyped up and worshipped in spite of the fact that they're just not that good or memorable, right? It's to hide the fact that the PS5 truly has no games. And we're in this weird situation where people don't seem to seem willing or able to admit to this fact. They're doing everything they possibly can to bend over backwards, to try and say that, like, the games are coming or that they came out a while ago or that they're uh, niche products. But in reality, there's re just fundamentally nothing coming out on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, right? Unless you're a Nintendo owner, right, you're not getting anything of value whatsoever, right? And I've been saying this for a long time, but it really has been getting worse over the past several years, right? I think if Concord had come out in, like, 2010 or so, right, you might have seen a lot more people be willing to, like, go to bat for it and, and chill for it and stuff like that, right? Concord, to me, is a really good example of how people are fixated on the absolutely on the absolute wrong things, right? Concord didn't fail because of of wokeness or because of like the design or the team or how they how they hated white people, right? Concord failed because it was a bad video game that came from a video game developer that has done nothing but produce bad video games. Right, PlayStation has never produced anything of value in its entire history, and general audiences are starting to catch on to that fact. The only people who care about PlayStation now are people who have never picked up a Nintendo console. It sucks that those people still exist, and they don't understand what, what's actually out there, but it is true. To me... It needs to be, we need to emphasize going forward just how much better Nintendo games are than the competition, right? Because I am just sick and tired of seeing good Nintendo games, you know, stuff like WarioWare Move It, stuff like Emio, stuff like Princess Peach Showtime get completely ignored by the masses for very petty, inconsequential reasons, you know, while games like Atelier are allowed to become popular right, where games like uh, Astro Bot are worshipped, you know, games like uh, Black Myth Wukong are, are hyped up to be Game of the Year contenders, you know, after the same group of people downplayed Super Mario Bros. Wonder and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, right? Why 
exactly are all of these better Nintendo games completely ignored in favor of promoting slop, right? And again, like, the excuses that people throw at these games don't make a whole lot of sense, right? You know, the the major reason people downplayed P- Princess Peach Showtime, oh, it's too easy, and yet they're perfectly willing to, to hype up something like Ashobot, right? They hype up games like uh, the Plucky Squire in some in some cases, right? It's interesting how the difficulty is some major deal breaker when it comes to Nintendo games, but then you have like these incredibly like basic uh, movie game PlayStation exclusives that that get a pass, right? It happens all the time. And of course, with like Black Myth Wukong, you have the the whole thing of just being like, oh, it's a, it's a. I don't even know why people pretended to like Black Myth Wukong. Like, you can't say it's a new IP because it's just another Souls thing, right? Like, it's just a worse version of of Slop we've already gotten, right? What exactly about Black Myth Wukong is supposed to get anyone interested? Nobody I know who played the game stuck with it for any length of time. And now that the game has been completely forgotten, it's it's safe to say the game just had no real impact whatsoever. And now we're going into like uh, the end of the year season where we're finally starting to get new Nintendo games. You know, games like Echoes of Wisdom and Mario Party Jamboree and Brothership, Dragon Quest Three, all of which look look way better than anything that PlayStation has put out like ever, right? And we're going to do the same process again, right? Where Echoes of Wisdom is being downplayed in favor of propping up, like, mediocre PlayStation games that no one plays. Again, Echoes of Wisdom is a really interesting situation because it feels like the the community is going to have a hard time downplaying this one after so... after coming out so hard against Tears of the Kingdom, right? They can't complain about, like, Echoes of Wisdom not being open world because they wrote off Tears of the Kingdom right they can't complain about the mechanics and the menu system like uh, again echoes of wisdom is something different right so the entire core argument that tears of the kingdom was too similar to breath of the wild the greatest game ever made just kind of completely goes out the window like again echoes of wisdom is going to be really interesting to see develop over the the next several weeks because i do think this game is going to be very very successful but you are going to see like the general audiences try and desperately downplay it. I've been saying for a long time that, like, Grezzo is one of Nintendo's most underrated partners, and this game is going to be another example as to why. Hopefully, this is the beginning of the end of that narrative, and that we can finally start talking about, like, how great Ever Oasis was, and how great Triforce Heroes was, and uh, what great work they did on, like, the Zelda remasters. Uh, remakes uh, and just how much how much uh, how they've been able to keep like the top down Zelda franchise alive with Link's Awakening and now Echoes of Wisdom right there's so much you can talk about Grezzo positively and yet most gamers probably don't even know they exist because they are complete and total plebs that have no respect for superior Nintendo games whatsoever.